My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 166. As you can see, problem is already on the blackboard and it should be 167, not 166. As you can see, quite clearly, problem is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? It says a man travel, a man travel a total of 42 kilometers. He biked five, he biked part of the way, part of his journey at six kilometers per hour, and then he walked the rest at two kilometers per hour. They, they go on to tell us that had he walked the distance that he biked and biked the distance that he walked, he would have taken six more hours to finish the journey. The question simply is, how long did he actually walk? That's all this is. That's all there is. As you can see quite clearly, this problem is very similar to what we did yesterday, problem number 166. And if you have not watched 166, stop this video immediately, watch 166, understand how to solve problem number 166, and then see if you can do this problem on your own. If you want to give it a, sh if you want to give it a shot right now, I'll get out of your way. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to, for you to, be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself first and then we'll compare your work against the work that you and I will do, do together in a few seconds time. Number 181, this is 167, we'll do problem number 181 which is also going to be very similar to this one but it's going to be a complicated, it's going to be a complicated version of this problem. The difference between 181 and this scenario is that here it is the distance that remains the same. Had I, had I walked the distance, had I walked the distance I buy and by the distance that I walked, I would have taken six more hours. In 181, it will say, had I walked when I biked, had I walked when I biked. In other words, it's the time that's going to be the same. It's going to be the two time periods that are going to be the same. Same time periods are going to be being spent uh, walking and, 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 and biking. Here, it is not the time that remains the constant, it is the distance. Had I walked the distance I biked and by the distance I walked, I would have taken six more hours. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. I'll give you five seconds to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay, as I said, this is very similar to what we did yesterday. No difference at all, same logic, same rationale, same methodology, nothing is different. So here we go, here's our solution. First thing first, we know that we went 42 kilometers. So the entire distance here is 42 kilometers. We are told that part of the way, part of the way we went, we were biking at six kilometers per hour. So let's call it here D kilometers, let's call it D, D for distance. We biked at six kilometers per hour. The remaining distance, since the total is 42, and since we are walking, we are, since we are biking d, uh, biking d kilometers, the remaining has to be 42 minus d kilometers, and that's the distance that we walk at 2 kilometers per hour. That's what's given to us. I'm going to raise now this 42 so that it doesn't get in the way, so that it doesn't confuse us. Well, let's find out what the time period is going to be for this segment of the journey, what the time period is going to be for this segment of the journey. So those will have two time periods, let's call them T1 and T2, T1 hours and T2 hours. We'll have time periods for these two segments and similarly we'll figure out the time periods for the reverse scenario. And once we have the four time periods, once we have the four time periods then we'll set up our equation based on the fact that we are told that it is taking us six more hours in the reverse scenario. So keep one more time, this T1 and T2 that you see are hours, or the time period in hours, the amount of amount of time that will take in this scenario, since we are walking, since we are walking D kilometers, or rather biking, since we are biking D kilometers at six kilometers, six kilometers per hour, as per hour, as you can see, as you can see, the kilometers are going to drop out, and this hour is going to end up on the top. And what will end up here is that t1 hours is going to be equal to d over 6. That's how many hours the first segment of the journey is going to take. Similarly t2 we are going for 
42 minus d, 42 minus d kilometers at 2 kilometers per hour, 2 kilometers per hour, and again the kilometers are going to drop out. This hour, this hour from the bottom is going to end up on the top, and what we'll have here is d2 is equal to 42 minus d over 2 hours. Now we figure out the amount of time it will take for the reverse scenario. Let's do that on the type. We need the room obviously. The reverse scenario in the reverse scenario we are going to walk. We are going to walk. We are going to walk, not bike. We are not going to bike we're going to walk d kilometers. Walk d kilometers at 2 kilometers per hour. And that's going to give us our t3. And since we are walking at 2 kilometers per hour, before we, were, before we were biking at 6 kilometers per hour, so we are d over 6. Now we are walking at 2 kilometers per hour, so it's going to be d over 2. d over 2 hours. And we're going to bike. Instead of walking, we're going to buy 42 minus d, 42 minus d kilometers at 6 kilometers per hour. And that's going to give us d4, which is simply going to be the distance divided by the speed. The distance is 42 minus d kilometers over 6, and this is how many hours we'll have. And that's all it is. Now we have the two sides. Two two time segment for the reverse scenario, we have the two time segment for the original scenario and we compare the total amount of time it takes for the entire journey in both cases. Let's do it down here. So here is the T1, here is the T2. So T1 plus T2 must equal T3 plus T4. Is that true? What does this equation tell us? This equation tells us that the amount of time it takes to finish the journey in the first scenario and the amount of time that it takes, total amount of time that it takes in the reverse scenario are equal. That is not the case. That is not the case at all. We were told that in the reverse scenario we'll end up taking six hours more or six hours less. He would, he, would, uh, he would have taken six hours more. In other words, this quantity that you see there, this quantity is six more hours, six more hours than T1 plus T2 hours. This quantity T, T3 plus T4 is six more hours than this quantity T1 plus T2. They are not as equal. How can we make this, how can we justify putting an equal sign here? Well, if you're gonna put an equal sign here, then we have to take away six from it. Voila. Now they are equal. Since this quantity is 6 more hours than T1 plus T2, if you take away 6, this quantity now, T3 plus T4 minus 6, must equal T1 plus T2. The rest is downhill. The rest is simple. All we have to do is make the substitution and off we go. All we have to do is make the substitution and off we go. T1 was D over 6. T2 was 42 minus D. 42 minus d over 2, t3 right here is d over 2, d over 2 plus 42 minus d over 6 minus 6. As you can see, this is the exact same equation, well not the exact same equation, but the exact same idea, exact same notion, exact same methodology as what we did yesterday, exact same situation. Now we have a denominator of 6 and a 2 and a 2 and a 6, we need to have the same denominator and here we have a denominator of 1. That won't do. We need to have a common denominator. And the common denominator here, of course, would be 6. This thing already have a 6. This, this thing already has a 6, rather. There is no reason to butcher the English language. How can we make this denominator into a 6? We have a 2. How can we make it a 6? That's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply top and bottom by 3. We're multiplying this by 3 over 3, we're not doing anything to it. We're multiplying it just plus 1. But now we have a denominator of 6, 3 times 2. Similarly here, take this quantity and multiply by 3 over 3. We have a denominator of 6. This one is already 6. 
We need a 6 here, so let's multiply top and bottom by 6. Voila. Now we can get going. We have the same denominator throughout the entire equation. We can ignore the bloody thing. Do you understand? Because they, everybody has it. There is no reason for one to brag, oh, I have a denominator of 6, but so does everybody else. Shut up. Do you understand? Okay, so let's get going. So we have a D here. Plus 3 times 42 minus D right here. 3 times 42 minus D. That has to equal 3D plus 42 minus D. Minus 6 times 6, which is going to give us 36. Let's get, let's get keep going. 3 times 42. How much is 3 times 42? How the hell do I know? 3 times 42. I know 3 times 40. 3 times 40 is 120. If 3 times 40 is 120, then 3 times 42 would have to be 6 more, 126. And then 3 times D is minus 3D. 3D plus 42 minus D. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I have not made a boo-boo. Do you understand? Otherwise, it would not be fun to undo everything. Let's carry on. Let's keep on going. 126. D and a negative 3D will give us negative 2D. 3D and a D will give us 2D. 3D minus 2D will give us 2D. And 42 minus 36. 40 minus 36 would have been 4. So 42 minus 36 would be 6. But before we do anything else, first thing I notice is that everything is a multiple of 2. Let's just divide the whole equation by 2. So we end up with 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 6 divided by 2 is 3, minus d equals d plus 3. Let's continue with this equation on the top. Actually, this equation is very straightforward. 2d will equal 2d will equal 60, I think. I hope. Put the student on the top. So the equation we have here is 63 minus d equals 60 minus 3. D plus 3. This right here is on the top. Bring the D to that side, bring the 3 to that side, and we end up with 2D equals 60. In other words, D equals 30. We're not quite done yet. That was not the question. The question was not how much is this first segment of the journey. The question was how long did I actually walk? So we have to figure it out. How long did I actually walk? We need the room, obviously. How long did I walk? Let's, let's find out, shall we? What we are claiming is that the first segment of the journey was 30 kilometers. If you recall, altogether it was 42. So if the first segment is 30 kilometers, the second segment would have to be 12 kilometers. 42 minus, 42 minus 30 or 12 kilometers. And now we are very close to answering the question which is how long did I actually walk? How long did I actually walk? So let's find out. So here's our first segment. We biked at 6 kilometers per hour. We biked at 6 kilometers per hour. We are going for 30 kilometers. That implies that we must have gone for 5 hours. T1 must have been 5 hours. Because 6 kilometers per hour, going, going at 6 kilometers per hour, a distance of 30 kilometers, which is 5 times as much as 5 hours. And here we ran at 2 kilometers per hour. 2 kilometers per hour, a distance of 12 hours will be 6 hours. There you go, there is your answer. The question was, how long did I run or how long did I walk? What were they asking? How long did I actually walk? Right here, how long did I actually walk? The answer is, I walked, I walked 6 hours. I walked 6 hours. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to take a few seconds to verify our answer by comparing the reverse scenario and see if it agrees with what is being told to us in the problem. So let's verify it. Where can we do the verification? Let's do the verification right here at the bottom. Let's do the verification right here at the bottom, which is the reverse scenario. The reverse scenario is, again, 42 kilometers, 30 kilometers, 12 kilometers, and here, instead of biking, we're going to run at 2 kilometers per hour. So if you're going to run at 2 kilometers per hour, a distance of 30 kilometers will take you 15 hours. 
and 12 kilometers instead of running if you bike at 6 kilometers per hour at 6 kilometers per hour the distance of 12 kilometers the distance of 12 kilometers will take you 2 hours 2 hours 2 hours plus 15 hours is 17 hours totally 17 hours here in the other scenario the total was 11 hours 5 plus 6 5 plus 6 is 11 hours here it is 17 hours it is taking us 6 hours longer than this scenario which is exactly what the problem told us problem told us that it would take us 6 more hours had we done our journey in the reverse fashion that's it we're going to add we're going to end on the note of fashion why not